So in my view, given that the racial wealth gap is extreme, racism on the job is extreme, and all this is very, very painful, then I believe that you have to be equally extreme when it comes to preparing for what's ahead. I, I don't think that there should be a limitation in how extreme you are to prepare to protect your children and grandchildren from the extreme pain, indignity, suffering, and stress they're going to feel by entering into a competitive economy where they're not prepared. Think about how horrible that feels, how terrible it feels to not have enough for you, for you to feed your children, how terrible it feels to know that if that man pulls the plug on my job, I don't know what the hell I'm going to do. Think about how painful that is to just know that you could be homeless in, a, in, in three or four weeks if, if you lost that, that job that you have. That, that's scary. So why is it, why, why am I considered the extremist when I say we should be investing stock and buying stock for our kids before they're born? Because if you invest consistently for those children, even at small amounts of money, just the amount of money you waste on fast food, if you put that same amount in the stock market for your kids, your kids will be financially secure. They'll be ready to do whatever they need to do. That's not crazy. That's not extreme. What's crazy to me is walking into the pits of hell and walking into the fire and thinking somehow that it's going to be okay for you. I, that's, that's, that doesn't make sense to me. So the second rule is every black child that wants to be prepared should own stock by the age of five. What's the third rule in the Black Wealth Master Plan? The third rule is that every black child that wants to be prepared, every B1 child should be prepared to make a down payment on real estate by the time they are 21 years old. By the time they're 21, they should have enough money somewhere, which might come from, I don't know, the, the, the $100,000 in stock that their parents have built up because they've been investing for them. They should have enough money somewhere where they can make a down payment on some real estate so they can become a property owner if they choose to. Now, they don't have to buy property at 21. Maybe they'll wait till they're 25. That's okay but they should be in a position to make that move if that's what they want to do. So those are the three rules, really simple. And, and, and where do these three rules come from? It comes from the fact that uh, the people that survive and thrive in this economy tend to be people who do three things, people who own businesses, people who own stock, and people who own real estate. The people who get killed in the economy are the people who work for the business owners, the employees, the consumers who buy products from the companies where the stockholders make money. When you go see Black Panther and you spend all your money going to see Black Panther, the Disney shareholders get richer. And then the third group is people who rent from the landlords. So, so instead of having a culture where we have nothing but employees, consumers, and renters, I prefer to see a culture where we also have just as many people who are employers, investors, and landlords. If you are the employer and the investor and the landlord more than 60, 70 percent of the time that you enter into the economic system, you're going to win. You're going to be wealthy. You're going to be ahead of everybody else. So 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 ultimately, this is it. This is the master plan. It's very simple. Write down those three rules. Learn how to start a business by the age of 12. Own stock by the age of five with consistent investments in more stock. Don't just do it one time. You do it consistently every every week, just like when you buy fast food, just like going to the bathroom, just like eating lunch every day. Consistently, 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 consistently. Number three, down payment money by the time they're 21 years old with the understanding of how to go buy real estate, with the understanding of how to go and buy a piece of property, because that property will increase in value as inflation arrives, as uh, as the economy moves forward, as time moves forward, real estate values tend to go up. You can rarely find any decent community anywhere in America where the cost of property now is cheaper than it was 20 years ago. Th those communities rarely exist. So ultimately, this, this is the master plan. This, to me, is 100 times better than anything you'll ever get going to college. The flaw of... The, of traditional thinking when it comes to economics is that there are a lot of people who don't start doing anything economically to prepare their children. They don't start at all until the kid is 18 years old. So that means you've wasted 18 years doing nothing financially to put, put the child ahead. Do you understand how much you can do in 18 years? 
I mean, do you really understand that that if I was to invest, say, let's say I took the same amount of money that I put toward a car note, let's say my car note six hundred dollars a month, and I and I put that money in the S and P five hundred, and let's say I'm just randomly picking stocks. I don't even let's say I don't even know, you know, I don't even know which stock to pick. So I'm but I'm just picking in the S and P five hundred. So I randomly pick an S and P five hundred stock every week, and I do that with six hundred dollars every month. Do you know that by that in 20 years, in that 20 years that you wasted doing nothing for your kid economically, in those 20 years, I could literally have, what's the number, about three to $400,000 in assets. I mean, why would you throw away three or $400,000 and then throw the kid out there with nothing, struggling, economically naked? It, the, the capitalism, capitalism is very, um, it's a tough system. It provides a lot of opportunities, but it's very much survival of the fittest. It's very predatory. And typically in America, what you find is that the people that have capital take advantage of the people that don't. The people that have options take advantage of the people that don't have options. That's just the reality. So put your child in a good position. Don't we're not we're not doing that with our kids no more. So this is the Black Wealth Master Plan. I'm going to repeat this a thousand times. So just get ready because I believe repetition is the way to sink something into the culture and make it real. Some people aren't going to listen. I don't care about that. I want to talk to those who do because it's it's a matter of getting ahead of the problem. You don't solve a problem when you're in it. You don't solve a problem after it's become a problem. You solve problems by preventing the problem. And that's what economic consciousness is all about. That's what manifest. I like that word manifest. That's what manifesting is all about. Um, economic consciousness pretty much comes down to seeing far ahead. Remember the ex example I gave you was if you're in a car and versus being in an airplane, if I'm in an airplane, I can see a hundred miles uh, down the road. If I'm in the car, I only see the car right in front of me. A lot of us live in that two dimensional space where all we can see is next weekend or next week or Drake and Kendrick Lamar or whatever's happening in the world right now. People that have consciousness are in the airplane. They can see what's happening 50 miles ahead. Get ready. Be prepared.